Hey everyone, and uh, we're back. Uh, and so I wrote what is probably uh, the dumbest program I've written, but at the same time, it it brings me so much joy. And so I wanted to uh, share it with you. Uh, and so we're going to create uh, a Cylon, just a little Cylon eye. Uh, if uh, if you've ever seen a user interface element that just bounces back and forth to indicate uh, progress uh, without knowing how far along it is, not giving like, you know, 10%, 20%, whatever, uh, it just bounces back and forth. That indicates that it's doing something but doesn't know uh, how far along it is. That is called a Cylon. And that dates back to an old television show called Battlestar Galactica. And I'm not talking about the reboot. I'm talking about the original 1978 show. So we're going to make that Cylon eye. Uh, of course, we're going to do this in Watcom C, which means that I should run the OW set env. And that will set up my environment. And over here on the D drive is where I'm doing all my work. And so we're going to create a new file. Uh, I'm going to use fed because uh, I like to use that for uh, uh, writing code. And we'll do fed on Cylon.c. All right, so we're going to uh, l let's set up our environment here. Um, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, so we need to start with an include on standard io.h because we need that to do any kind of standard uh, printing, like uh, we're going to do a, a put s or something. Uh, we need that. Uh, we also need to do an include um, on uh, conio.h. Uh, and we need that if we need to do things like, uh, for example, uh, get ch. That'll get a single uh, key from the keyboard. Uh, we can also do include on uh, graph.h. And we're going to need that because we're going to set the video mode and do some colors. Uh, and then later on, uh, we're going to do an include on uh, i86.h. Because later on, we're going we're gonna to do things with a delay function. And that's where that gets defined. All right, so let's uh, let's start by uh, by defining our screen to create a Cylon. Uh, so we're going to do uh, an int function for main. I don't need to take any parameters, so I'll just make that an empty list. Uh, and uh, let's go ahead and, and set up the screen. Let's let's do this piecemeal here. Set up the screen. Uh, we'll write this and we'll test it, and then we'll go back and add some more. So we need to start with set video mode, and I want to set the mode to be text C. 80. That'll be text mode color at 80 columns. Now, this function will return the number of uh, rows, the number of lines basically on the screen, uh, and um, it'll return zero if an error. So we probably should be good programmers here and test if that function returns zero, then there was an error. And so we'll just return back to the operating system with an error code of, we'll say, one. All right, so if that worked, now we can go ahead and clear the screen with a color. I want to clear the screen with a um, sort of a gray color. It looks kind of like silver. Uh, so we'll set uh, the background color to be seven. And if you remember your color numbers, seven is just the regular white that we'd use for text. And you can only use for background colors, uh, colors zero through seven, the first eight colors. Uh, and so that's, that's what we're going to use there. Uh, so we're going to use white, which is sort of looking a little bit like a, uh, sort of a <laughs> sort of dull silver, I guess you could say. And we're going to go ahead and clear the screen, clear screen, uh, with, uh, we're going to tell it we want to clear the entire screen. So G clear screen. And I should mention that, you know, this, the, uh, these functions so far that I'm using with underscores, the set video mode, the set BK color, the set clear screen, these are all functions from, uh, open Watcom. If you're going to be doing this program using some other C compiler on DOS, you want to double check what functions will actually do things like setting the video mode or, uh, setting colors and clearing the screen. So now that I've cleared the entire screen with this white color, this gray color, we, we need to establish a little stripe that we're going to use for the Cylon's eye to go back and forth. And so for that, we need to do set uh, uh, BK color, the background color, we'll set that to black. And that's color uh, zero. And then we're going we're gonna to later print some text in there. So let's go ahead and just do a set that now. Set the text color to 12. And so 12 is a nice bright red color. And then uh, having set the text color and the background color, we can now uh, probably should define these, uh, the text window. So we're going to set the text window to be 
uh, starting at uh, row 10 and column one, it's going to end at the same row 10, but column 80. And having defined the text window, now I want to say I want to clear the screen on just that window, which means I need to pass it G window. So let's uh, let's not go any further yet. Let's just test, to make sure that we got what we have. And so we'll just do a real quick uh, get ch, and it'll just wait for a key from the keyboard, uh, and then it will. Uh, we should probably uh, reset the video mode back to the default. So we'll do set video mode back to default mode, and then from there we can return back to the operating system with zero. That indicates everything was was okay. All right. So let's do file and then save and quit and then we can do watcom compiler and linker i don't need to be quite as verbose so we'll do slash q on cylon.c there it is i've now compiled cylon.exe so if we run cylon there it is so i've got uh, a gray screen and then i've got a black stripe running across uh the middle so let's let's go ahead and do some stuff there now uh you'll also notice i've got a i've got a cursor showing and so we can turn that off we'll just hit any key here i'll do space to get out of that we'll go back into that uh, file using fed cylon.c all right so uh let's uh let's let's have it run a cylon um and so to do that, I find it's actually easiest to, rather than doing anything really cute, um, you know, with moving some stuff around and, and, and shifts and things like that, it's, it's actually really easy if we just define uh, an array of characters here. So we're going to do uh, an array called a pair. Uh, and for whenever uh, we've got the Cylon moving, uh, let's say, to the right, um, it is going to be defined as this array and so this array of values all right so we need we want to start with uh you know the cylon needs to have moving off to the right hand side so think about the last bit first uh, a little bit easier maybe if i uh, were to save this and, and go into edit real quick and so looking at the uh, utilities menu looking at her ascii table uh, i want to have a nice bright solid color and so down here um value d b is a nice solid uh filled in rectangle and then i also want to kind of appear to fade off as it moves and so that means the trail behind it has to be uh here it is b2 and then b1 and then b0 and then to wipe over that space or the, the last character we're also going to put a space in there all right, so let's let's do that. So knowing that's what we're we're doing, we're adding a D B. That's the filled in uh, square, and then uh, B two, B one, B zero. So we'll exit out of this and go back into uh, Cylon, and then let's. So from the right hand side, and it's moving to the right. I want it to be zero uh, X D B, right? And before that, I wanted to have zero X. Uh, B2. That's the, uh, the the heaviest sort of pixel, uh, sort of uh, pixelated uh, uh, rectangle. And then trailing behind that, I want to have a 0xB1. And then trailing behind that, I want to have a 0xB0. That's the lightest of, this, of the dither uh, pattern. And then uh, trailing behind that, just to, as I print this one space at a time <laughs> over on the right hand side i want to wipe out the last character i'll just put a space in there right and so now i've got an array here of five values and that's moving off to the right and moving off to the left you know we could do some cute stuff by just sort of inverting the array and uh it, this is not a very big program with not using a lot of variables so we can afford to throw five more care values in there so we'll do a care for whenever this thing is pointing to the left and that is an array and basically it's the not basically it's the exact same values but in the reverse order so um, when it's moving to the left it needs to be that solid character first zero x uh, db 
And then right behind it is the heavy dither one, and that's 0xb2, and then 0xb1, and then 0xb0, uh, followed by a space. And that is another array of five values. All right, so um, having done that, let's let's actually move our little Cylon thing. So down here, uh, let's uh, in, instead of uh, instead of the get ch. Well, we'll leave the get ch there for now. But we'll do uh, we'll just say uh, move the uh, Cylon Cylon value. Um, and we'll move it off to the right. And so we'll, we'll give it a direction of one or an increment of one. Uh, and we'll just do that. And then when it's done now, it'll just prompt for a character and then it'll be done. All right. So let's, uh, let's do that. So we're going to do up here, uh, we need to do a function called move Cylon. And so that doesn't, uh, um, we're going to want to, we're going to want to, um, be able to detect uh, if the user is like hit escape later on. So um, even though we don't need a return value right now, we're going to need one later on. So we'll make this an int function called move Cylon, and we'll give it a, an argument that is an integer value of a direction. And so basically it's going to be left or right. And so in fact, we'll make a note right here. So direction should be only uh, plus one, oops, plus one, or minus one. And so plus one means it's moving off to the right, right? Uh, and then uh, minus one means it is moving off to the left. You can think about that as being an increment. Uh, all right, so having entered that, uh, I want to know what starting position, uh, what column I need to be printing these, uh, these arrays in. So we'll say uh, uh, an integer uh, variable called call, and that just reminds me what column it's in. All right, so let's let's write a function that that will actually process uh, moving this Cylon thing left and right, and so we'll just test it first, moving off to the right, and so we'll say um, the uh, uh, which make let's make sure that the direction is only one or minus one. So if the direction is one, then it's moving off to the right. And so that means uh, my uh, starting column should be one. Uh, otherwise, if else if the dir is minus one, that means it's moving off to the left. And my starting column needs to be, so I've got a five character array and I've got 80 columns to play with. And so we'll start the starting column at 75. And then if it's not one or minus one, then it's else, in which case that means we passed it at a value that we don't want to use because uh, it should only be an increment of one or minus one. And so we'll just return back with uh, zero. This basically indicates some sort of a failure. All right, so uh, uh, once we've done that, let's go ahead and, and move the Cylon. So we'll move the Cylon. And... Uh, uh, we, we're going to enter a loop in here. So we're moving off to the right. So think about uh, as long as, we'll do a while loop here, as long as the, uh, so if we're passing dir equals one, then as long as the call is less than uh, 76, or I could say less or equal to 75, but you know we'll say less than 76, then do a loop. But if we need to pass it the other way around, if we need to do, um, you know, dir is minus one. Well, we need to think about that. Um, so the, um, if the call, as long, as long as the call is greater than zero, cause you can't have a, can't print at column zero. We really need to print at column one or above. Um, and call is less than 76. Then we're going to do this loop. And so for this, we're going to go ahead and set our text position. And that's going to be, um, we're in the window, so that's one. And then, because we already find our window, so this is the first line of that window. And then at column position, call. 
Um, all right, so if the dir is one, if it's moving off to the right, let's go ahead and do an out mem. Out mem is a function that will print uh, the contents of an array to uh, uh, of care values to the screen. Um, and uh, we can tell it how many bytes we want to print out. So out mem using the, this is moving off to the right. So using the right array, uh, and we're going to print out only the first five values because that's all we have in the array. All right. So if it's not moving off to the right, then we can just safely say else because up above, we've already said, we've already verified that there can only be one or minus one. Uh, so if it's not one, then it's going to definitely be minus one. And we're going to, at that point, we're going to just out mem uh, the left array, uh, only five values. All right. So, um, to animate this, uh, I don't want to just overwrite each one, bam, right after the other. I actually want to have a little bit of a delay in there. So, uh, let's use the delay function. That's why we used, uh, int I 86. Uh, and so we need a delay of, uh, 10. And then I can now increment uh, the column. So I'm going to do a column plus equals the direction. So if this is moving off to the right, dir was plus one. And so now basically this is the same as saying call is call plus one. And if it's moving off to the left, well, dir was minus one. And so this is the same as saying call equals call minus one. So call plus equals dir is going to either add one or subtract one because dir can only be plus one or minus one. All right. So let's go ahead and, uh, we'll do that. And then, um, yeah, let's just, and once we've done that, uh, you know what, I think actually that's probably enough for our loop right now, uh, just for testing. We'll add some more to it later. And then once we're done, let's go ahead and just return back the operating or not the operating system, return the function, uh, one to indicate that we have, uh, finished. All right, so let's, that should generate, because down here, we said we're going to move Cylon off to the right, because we're using one, and it'll just scoot off to the right, and then it should pause, because we're doing get CH, and that should just wait to make sure that everything is okay. All right, so I'm just, what I'm basically doing right now is just making sure that uh, I haven't added any bugs. So let's go ahead and do file, save and quit. Oops, save and quit. And Watcom compiler and linker quiet of Cylon.c. I'm not seeing any errors, so let's run Cylon. And there it goes off to the right. All right, now we've got a cursor blinking in there, so we can fix that. Now it's stopped. And so I can now uh, just hit any key and it'll exit. There it is. And so let's go ahead and, and go back into fed of uh, Cylon.c. Let's get rid of the cursor because I noticed the cursor was on there. So we can actually use a function. Uh, that will set our text cursor. So let's scooch down to our, our main function. And so before we move the Cylon, so right here, um, let's, let's use a function called set text cursor cursor. Um, and this gives it uh, different values that'll define, uh, what the cursor looks like. And if you give it a uh, zero X two zero zero zero, that will turn off the cursor. So no cursor. And, uh, I'm going to also at the end, um, uh, I'm going to set my cursor back up again. So I'll say, um, actually I like to do this before I set the video mode again. So we'll do a set text cursor here of, uh, to put the cursor back to a normal underscore blinking cursor. It's going to be, uh, zero X zero six zero seven. That's our standard. Uh, blinking cursor. And so that gets rid of our cursor. Uh, and so I like the fact that it scooched off to the right. And then uh, let's, let's also scooch it off to the left to make sure that that works. Okay. And so we'll say move Cylon, uh, minus one. And so what this will do is this will move off to the right and immediately it'll move it back to the left. And I just want to make sure everything is working. Okay. And so let's go ahead and do file save and quit and Watcom compiler and linker quiet Cylon.c. No errors, Cylon off to the right. 
and then back to the left. And I don't know why, but that makes me just so happy. Um, a child of the 70s and 80s. Uh, that just makes me so happy. So, all right. So now it's waiting for a keystroke. And so we can go ahead and uh, hit space. There we go. So that's good. Uh, so now that we've got that, all we need to do is uh, really just add some code to detect if I'm ready to stop. We'll just have it run continuously. And we'll add some code that, you know, if I basically hit, uh, we'll say the escape key. So we'll do fed cylon.c. And so where was I down here? So when we move the Cylon light back and forth, uh, let's see here. After we do uh, update the column, uh, let's also check uh, for uh, somebody pressing the escape key. That would indicate pressing uh, escape key to try and quit. And so... Uh, we can use a function called KB hit, and that basically returns back to say whether or not somebody's pressed a key on the keyboard. Then we can go test for it. So if KB hit, then do this test. And so knowing that there's something that has been hit, uh, we can say, um, we can do an if uh, get CH uh, equals 27. That is the escape key. Uh, then we're going to return back with uh, zero. The same thing we did up above, but we detected that uh, dir is either, uh, well, basically not one or minus one. Uh, so basically that's returning a zero, which is a false value. And so we can test for that. And so let's go back here and say that's the end of our if statement. All right. Um, but get ch, if we actually were to hit an extended key, like one of the function keys, get ch will actually return zero. And then you're supposed to use get ch one more time uh, to, um, uh, to get the actual value. Now, it's just easier if rather than using the get ch function, we basically create a wrapper around that. And so I'm going to do a function called pause. And so let's go and write a function up here called pause. It basically will wrap that second test and so here's a uh, int function called pause uh, and it doesn't take any uh, options and it's going we're going to need to capture what key has been pressed and so there's our int and so let's go immediately uh, say key equals uh, get ch now if key is zero that means it's an extended key and we need to call get ch again uh, to, to clear it, basically to, to get the actual extended value. Um, but I don't care about the extended value. I only care that it was an extended key because it's clearly not escape. So in this case, we're basically clearing it. And so we'll just do get ch one more time, but not storage value anywhere because I don't care. Uh, it's not 27, and that's all I really care about at this point. So basically, I'm going to make a comment in here that uh, we're going to return uh, the original uh, zero value anyway. Uh, and so now that we're done with that if statement, um, we can now just return the value of the key. And so if I hit the escape key, what's going to be stored in key and return back as the function exit is uh, 27. If I hit, uh, let's say, any of the function keys, F keys, uh, the first return from get ch will be zero. And then you have to call get ch one more time, and that'll tell you what the other extended key value is because I don't care about the extended keys, I'm just going to return the zero and I'll just leave it at that because I only want to care about about 27 because that's the value of uh, the escape key. All right, so having done that, all right, so there's my if pause uh, equals 27. Then we can return back with a false value. And so I've been very careful here. What this does is that if it is successful in moving all the way from let's say left to the right or the right to the back to the left it's going to return one if it doesn't get all the way over there i.e we've hit the escape key it's going to return zero or if we gave it a direction which is basically an increment that was neither one or minus one it will also return zero a false value and so that means down here where i said move cylon left and right so what we're going to do here, let's, if we're going to say, um, we're going to just do a while loop. <laughs> and so we're going to say while 
move Cylon uh, by a direction, then we need to uh, reverse the direction. So we're going to say basically direction equals direction times minus one, because if the direction was positive one, that will make the new direction minus one. If it was already minus one, then minus one times minus one is a positive one. So basically this is changing the value from one to minus one, one to minus one. So uh, dir is star equals minus one. That's the same as saying dir equals dir uh, times minus one. So this is reversing uh, the direction. And that's all we need to do. If somebody hit escapes while we're, uh, while we're running this, uh, this will return a zero value. And uh, uh, otherwise it will return a true value and it'll just then reverse the direction. Um, oops, it'll reverse the direction uh, and then do it again. Uh, and we've also set the uh, start and end position. So that way it will always overwrite the, when it needs to change direction, it'll always overwrite. And so that works out really well. Uh, oh, need to have a dir uh, value up here in my main function. So let's do uh, an int variable called dir, and we'll set that to one just to move it off to the right hand side of the screen first. And so what I'm doing here is I'm setting my video mode. I'm setting the uh, clearing the entire screen to be uh, gray, basically seven, and then I'm making that black stripe. And uh, then I'm uh, getting rid of my cursor. And then as long as it's successfully able to move the Cylon from either left to right or right to left, uh, it just then reverses the direction and does it again. <laughs> and then uh, when it's done, it resets the uh, text cursor back and it resets the video mode. And, you know, we might as well have a little bit of fun here and say, put S owner done, put S uh, by your command. All right. And so I think, I think that's it. I think that's our, that's our, our program. And so let's go ahead and uh, we'll do a file, uh, save and quit. Watcom compiler linker, quiet, Cylon.c. I'm not seeing any errors. And so let's see if it works. And then back to the left. And then back to the right. And, you know, I got to tell you, with the, with the little dithering behind that, that bright, uh, solid color, uh, it kind of has this little after effect, uh, which if you've ever seen the original Battlestar Galactica, that is exactly what it looked like. So, you know, I just have to say, uh, this is, uh, probably one of the dumbest programs I've ever written, but it's also the one that brings me the most joy. I just love the fact that it does this uh, back and forth. And yeah, all I need to do at this point is just hit the escape key and that should exit my program. There it is. It's now exited the program. So that is a little program to uh, make a Cylon light go back and forth. Uh, what do you think about that video? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, some of you support me on Patreon, and I really appreciate you. You really do make this channel happen. Uh, some of you are sponsoring it at a higher level, and I want to thank you especially here uh, for that. Uh, visit our website at freedas.org. Join us on Facebook. Follow us on Mastodon. And consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you.